On October 15th, 2022, the Tennessee Volunteers made a statement. They'd climbed into the top 10 for just the second time since 2006, and they'd done it by knocking off three ranked opponents, largely on the back of a blistering offense crafted by head coach Josh Heupel. That all led them to a matchup with number 3 Alabama, a rivalry game against a team that set the standard for college football defense for more than a decade now. As I write this, the Crimson Tide are 12th in the country in total defense and 14th in scoring defense, giving up just 18 points and 304 yards per game. So what did the Vols do against this defense? They absolutely shredded it, putting up 52 points and 567 yards, and at times they even made it look easy, with five quick strike touchdown drives of five plays or less. This was obviously a big game for quarterback Hendon Hooker, who threw for 385 yards and five touchdowns, but a lot of the attention's also gone to the receiver that caught those touchdowns, junior pass catcher Jalen Hyatt. Hyatt averaged a monumental 34.5 yards per reception against Alabama, and on most of those catches, it felt like the Tide didn't have any idea where he was or who should be covering him. In this video, we'll figure out how Tennessee was able to do this by looking at the structure of their passing game and how they used that passing game to put Hyatt in positions where his elite speed could blow the top off of Alabama's defense. To understand Tennessee's game plan versus Alabama, we first need to understand their passing game in general, which comes from the coaching tree of former Baylor head coach Art Bryles. While Bryles' Baylor program imploded in scandal, the offense that he developed has since started to spread via his old assistant coaches. This offensive school is often called the Veer and Shoot, and as you might guess from the second part of that name, its passing game borrows a lot of elements from the older Run and Shoot. The key feature of any Run and Shoot style passing game is that, on any given play, receivers aren't necessarily locked into running specific routes. Instead, at least some of them are going to read the defensive backs that are playing over them, and they're going to have several routes to choose from based on what those defenders do. To see how this works, let's look at two examples of the same passing concept, which seems to be Tennessee's take on the old run-and-shoot-go concept, with some tweaks that you wouldn't necessarily see in the classic version of go. The Vols have three receiving threats up at the top of the screen, and in go, the outside receivers are going to release vertically down the field, while the inside most receiver, who's a tight end here, is going to break outside and into the flat. And this is the basic skeleton of the go concept, although as we're about to see, it won't always develop this way. Let's start by looking at the outside receiver at the top of the screen. I just said that in the go concept, that guy's running a vertical route down the sideline, but in reality, this is only one of the options that he can run on Tennessee's version of this play, with his read being summed up in two rules. If he's even, I'm leaving, and if he's deep, I stop. The rule, if he's even, I'm leaving, just means that if that wide receiver ever gets on the same plane as the guy that's covering him, basically if he's close enough to reach out and touch him, then he's just going to turn on the Jets and try to beat him deep down the sideline. On this play, though, that's not going to happen. Here, we're going to see the cornerback lined up over that receiver start to bail just before the snap, and this is where the second rule, if he's deep, I stop, comes into play. After the snap, the wide receiver sees the cornerback bailing and preserving roughly a five-yard cushion over him. He's not even with that defender, and he definitely can't reach out and touch him, so he's just going to stop and fill the space that that guy's giving up underneath. While the go concept may intend for that guy to go vertical, he's only going to do that if he has a shot at winning, and this is the beauty of building route conversions like this into your offense. To the inside, the slot receiver, who's Jalen Hyatt on this play, is running a route called a seam read, and on this kind of route, he'll have three options of his own. He can go straight down the seam, giving him that vertical route that we saw in the basic skeleton of go. He can bang his route inside on a skinny post, or he can break his route off and work inside to the first open window over the middle. Here he's going to take the first option, that vertical seam route, but let's look at the technique that gets him to that choice. Before the snap, it's Hyatt's job to identify the near safety, who will be this guy lined up inside and over the top of him. After the snap, his goal is to attack that safety and get right into his face if he can. As he does this, we see that he's bracketed by two defenders, with a nickelback playing outside and over the top, well, the near safety plays inside and over the top, and at this point, that receiver's watching to see what that safety does. If that guy stays over the top and preserves roughly a five-yard cushion, then he's going to break off on a route underneath into the inside. On this play, though, the safety allows the cushion to break down, and if we pause the play right here, we see that Hyatt's within about two yards of him. Given how tight that safety's playing, and given the fact that he's playing inside a Hyatt, it would make no sense to break this route over the middle, because that'd just take him straight to that safety. We can also see here, though, that with the nickelback playing outside of him and the safety playing inside, there's nobody directly over the top to prevent Hyatt from running straight down the seam, and so he turns on the afterburners and blows the top off of the coverage. 
In fact, if we switch over to this camera angle, we see that if Hooker had gone to this route and put the ball deep into the outside, it probably would have been a sixth touchdown, but instead he checks it down to the back and is happy to pick up an easy first down. On the last play, we saw that Alabama's coverage turned this go concept into a hitch by the outside receiver, paired with a seam route to Hyatt in the slot. On this play, we'll see how the exact same passing concept can develop in a totally different way against a different coverage. Starting on the outside, remember that that receiver's rules are, if he's even, I'm leaving, and if he's deep, I stop. Well, before the snap, we see that the cornerback lined up over him is walked up and is showing press. After the snap, he does try to jam his receiver, and this allows that receiver to pull even with him. He can definitely reach out and touch his defender in this shot, and so in this case, he takes off down the sideline. If the cornerback's even, the receiver's leaving. Looking to the inside now, let's see what happens to Hyatt's seam read. Before the snap, we'll remember that he's identifying the near safety who is again lined up inside and over the top of him. Before the snap, though, something different's going to happen. Tennessee's going to motion their tight end across the formation to run his flat route in this go concept. And when he does this, Alabama is going to roll their safeties. So that near safety is going to roll down into underneath coverage. And the opposite safety is going to drop back to play over the top in the middle of the formation. After the snap, Hyatt's responsibility is the same as it was on the last play. He attacks that near safety and tries to get into his face, and we can see that going on in the shot right here. Eventually, though, that safety is going to leave Hyatt. Remember that when the tight end motioned across, that guy started to spin down to match him, and in that role, it's his job to take away any sure outside throw to that guy. After making initial contact with Hyatt to try and reroute him out of the seam, he's going to pass him off to the deep coverage before widening to play a sure outside zone underneath. In the deep coverage, we'll remember that as part of this safety rotation, Alabama had also pulled their opposite safety back into the deep middle, and with that guy sitting there, anything deep, whether it's a seam route or a post, is just going to take Hyatt straight to him. To counter this, Hyatt's going to activate his third option on this route, breaking it off inside and running a dig over the middle. The quarterback floats the ball a little bit here, and so they won't be able to connect, but we can see in this shot that against this coverage, Tennessee's go concept has given them an outside vertical combined with a dig from the slot, which is a completely different picture from the hitch and seam that we saw in the last play. So far, this discussion gives us the basic goal of Tennessee's offense. They want to get one of these read routes isolated against one defender, and then they want to let their receiver break away from that guy wherever he happens to end up. If you're trying to defend this kind of thing, then there are really two broad options. First, you can play man and just trust that your defenders will be able to run with their receivers one-on-one -on -one no matter where they go. Second, you can try to get multiple defenders on those read routes so that they can divide up the various passing options amongst themselves. And this second option is what Alabama went with on obvious passing downs, like this third and 11, where they're going to force Hooker to scramble short of the sticks. To see why this works, let's remember that on all the plays that we've seen, Tennessee's outside wide receiver has had the option to either run deep down the sidelines or to pull up and stop underneath. The inside receivers then had the option to either run deep on a seam or a post route, or to break it off on a dig over the middle. To take away all of these options, Alabama's running a split safety coverage, so they're going to have a deep safety playing over the top to each side of the field, and if we look at the two possible vertical routes coming from the top of the screen, we see that the safety over those guys should be able to get to either route. With that guy playing deep then, the only question left is how to stop the options that might break underneath of him, and so Alabama's going to dedicate an additional defender to each of those receivers in underneath coverage. On the outside, the cornerback's going to soft press and stay tight to whichever receiver attacks him in the flat, and this is going to let him take away any stop route to the outside. They're then going to drop this stand-up edge player out to play inside of the slot receiver, sinking with him and rolling under any inside break, with additional help coming from this linebacker in the middle of the field. In this way, Alabama's able to distribute Tennessee's various options across multiple defenders, with a deep safety taking away the two possible vertical routes, the cornerback taking away anything short down the sideline, and the dropping linebackers getting underneath anything that breaks over the middle. The problem here is that Alabama can't realistically run this on every down and distance, and we can see why if we look at the pre-snap look on this play. There's still some time before the snap, so the tight aren't in their final alignment yet, but they will ultimately do what we just saw, dropping their safeties deep to defend any routes over the top, and then dedicating an additional defender to each receiver and underneath coverage. The problem here is that when you have to dedicate six defenders to playing out wide in coverage like this, you leave yourself with just five defenders in the box. 
defenses typically want to outnumber the offense's blockers by at least one. And so with five defenders going up against five offensive linemen, this is a very favorable box count for the offense. What this meant was that on neutral downs and distances, Alabama often had to give up something in coverage if they wanted to get a sixth man in the box. And now that we understand that, we're ready to appreciate how the Volunteers put up several monster passing touchdowns and made it look easy. Let's start with this play, where Tennessee's again going to use motion to get into our old friend, the go concept. Before they do that, though, we see them lining up with the tight end in the backfield, giving them a sixth potential run blocker in addition to the five offensive linemen. Alabama has six defenders in the box to match those guys, but remember, the defense doesn't just want to match, they want to outnumber the offense's run blockers by at least one, and to see how the tight are doing that on this play, we need to look at their coverage. The key here is that Bama's hoping to get that seventh run defender from this short side safety up at the top of the screen. From this image, it might not look like that guy's a run defender, but we can see how this works if we keep an eye on the edge player lined up to this same side. After the snap, we're going to see that guy jump down inside of the left tackle. The idea here is that if that edge player can take away that inside gap, it'll force the running back to bounce the ball horizontally to the edge. And once he does so, that safety is going to be in a good position to fly up unblocked and make the tackle. The issue here is that if that safety is going to have this run responsibility, then he can't bail outside and over the top as a true deep half player. And so what we end up with instead is an inside-outside bracket with him and the nickel back lined up over Jalen Hyatt, who's Tennessee's slot receiver on this play. The idea is that the nickelback can play outside and over the top, preventing Hyatt from getting to the deep sideline, while the safety gives him inside help against the dig and the post route that we've seen on the seam read. Of course, because of that guy's run responsibility, he has to offer this inside help from a relatively tight alignment, and here we see him sitting just 10 yards off the ball at the snap. On top of that, because of his run responsibility, he does have to have some patience as he makes his run pass read, and all of this is going to put him at a major disadvantage against a receiver that runs a 10.46 in the 100. Now let's see how Go developed against this coverage. Before the snap, the Volunteers motion their tight end out of the backfield to this side, where he's going to run the flat route in this Go concept. A nice benefit here is that this grabs the linebacker to the side, pulling him wide and preventing him from offering any inside help to the safety. This all ensures that Hyatt's only going to be going up against that nickelback safety bracket that's lined up over him, and by now we know all of his rules. After the snap, he's going to attack the near safety and cut based off of his reaction. We know that that near safety potentially has a run responsibility on this play, and in fact, after the snap, we see him taking a false step toward the line of scrimmage when the Vols run a light play action fake at him. This allows Hyatt to break down that cushion to roughly three yards, and with nobody lined up over the top of him in the seam, he just turns on the afterburners and blows right past everybody for a long touchdown. Now, some of you might see this picture and wonder why the nickelback couldn't squeeze inside with Hyatt and cap him over the top, and he potentially could, but the key is that as long as that nickelback is an outside defender, which he has to be to keep Hyatt from getting to the deep sidelines, then Hyatt will be breaking away from him on this route. The whole point of the seam read is that it allows Hyatt to take advantage of whatever the safety does to try and give that guy help. If the safety lets Hyatt break down his cushion, then he's going to blow past him for the post route into the deep middle of the field. If the safety maintains his cushion and bails fast to take away the post, then Hyatt's going to throttle down and break underneath of him on the dig. He's breaking away from the nickelback no matter what happens, and so the purpose of the read is just to control the safety. But what happens if the defender over the top plays as an inside rather than an outside defender? We'll see that on this play, where Tennessee's got four receiving threats split out wide, leaving them with just five offensive linemen in the box. Alabama wants to outnumber those guys against the run, and so they're putting five defenders directly in the box, and then using this stand-up edge player as their sixth run defender on the outside, where he'll also be available to play a role in coverage. Because that guy's an essential run defender, though, and because he's a 240-pound linebacker, his contribution in coverage can only go so far. So all that that guy can really do here is drop and play as an inside defender in underneath coverage. If we think about this from the perspective of the seam read, therefore, then the only option that he can really help take away is the dig. This thing leaves the safety to take away the seam in the post, and so he's going to line up with inside leverage on Hyatt, and he's going to have to backpedal for depth once the ball's snapped. With the edge defender sitting inside and underneath to take away the dig and the outside run. And with the safety bailing deep and inside to take away the seam and the post. The Tide's cornerback is then going to have to man up on the outside receiver. And here we see him lining up and preparing to play press man. This is a nice adjustment by the Crimson Tide. And given what we've seen from Tennessee's receivers at this point, it looks like it should be able to take everything away. 
The problem, though, is that Tennessee obviously has more than one passing concept, and so Hyatt isn't always going to be running a seam read. On this play, in fact, the Vols are running a switch concept, and in this concept, the outside receiver is going to run under Hyatt, breaking into the middle of the field and taking his man cornerback with him. With that cornerback out of the picture, Hyatt then has an unobstructed outside release to the sideline. With the cornerback gone and the outside linebacker playing tight to the box against the run, he is now isolated on the safety who's playing inside and over the top, and so he's going to wheel out to the sideline and take his read off of that safety. The defender lets him break down his cushion to within a few yards, and so Hyatt turns it downfield, activates that 10.4600 speed, and beats him over the top for another long touchdown. Up until now, we've seen a lot of split safety coverages where Alabama's put a deep defender over the top to each side of the field, and we've seen that they've had trouble defending the run while also getting multiple defenders to divide up Tennessee's read routes. Throughout the game, therefore, they sometimes rolled their safeties and played single high coverages instead, and here we'll see another play where they force Hooker to scramble. This is another play where Tennessee's got their tight end in the backfield as a sixth blocker. Bama's got six guys in the box, and so they're going to use a secondary rotation to give them a seventh man, and the precise way that they do this is going to be important here. When we look at Tennessee's formation, we see that their tight end is offset to the left side of the formation, and that their running back is offset to the right. This makes it very likely that the Volunteers will be running to the left, with the running back working from right to left to get the ball from the quarterback, and then continuing in that direction for his run play. To combat this, Bama's shifting their linebackers over to this assumed play side, and then they're rolling their safeties in the opposite direction, with one dropping down into the box to be that seventh run defender, while the other drops back to play the deep middle. Moving on to look at the coverage now, we can see how this would defend the kind of routes that we've just seen. Jalen Hyatt's lined up in the slot to the left side of the formation here, and the Tide have a nickelback playing outside and over the top of him. From this position, he'll be able to stay on top of any outside breaking route like the one that we just saw on Tennessee's switch concept. To the inside, the defense has that deep safety playing in the middle of the field. If Hyatt's running a seam read here, then that guy's going to be in position to get over the top of either the seam route or the post, giving inside help to the nickelback on either of Hyatt's possible vertical routes. Finally, to take away the dig, they're going to ask their linebackers to drop in the middle of the formation, letting them get underneath of Hyatt in case he breaks over the intermediate middle on the dig route. Again, this seems like a nice adjustment, and it makes sense based on everything that we've seen up until this point of the video. Now, let's watch this play, which is a beautifully subtle response to this kind of coverage. Here again, Tennessee's got their tight end in the backfield as a sixth blocker. Again, the tight end is offset to the left, and the running back's offset to the right, making it most likely that any run play would go to the left. Alabama's in their dime package here, so their nickelback's taken the place of one of their linebackers, but again, the Tide have shifted that guy and a true linebacker over toward the probable point of attack, and they are then rolling their safeties in the opposite direction, with one safety rolling down to the apparent backside as the seventh run defender, while the other safety drops back to defend the deep middle. Now, Tennessee's about to do something that seems completely harmless, but is absolutely deadly. Keep an eye out for it. Based on how I set that up, it's probably obvious that I'm talking about the running back and the tight end switching alignments, but how can this minor change be deadly in the passing game? Well, when the Volunteers swap their backfield alignment like this, Alabama reloads their coverage. With this change in backfield alignment, the run is now probably going to the right, and so the Tide bump their nickelback and linebacker over to that side, and their safeties roll in the opposite direction. Why is this deadly? Well, Jalen Hyatt is the guy lined up off the ball in this stack formation down at the bottom of the screen, and when Tennessee flops their backfield alignment, they ensure that the safety closest to him will be rolling away from him. Well, if we keep an eye on that safety and watch him just after the snap, we see that he's rolling back end inside toward the middle of the field, and he now has his back to Tennessee's most dangerous player. To take advantage of this, Tennessee's running a concept called slot choice. On this concept, the receiver on the ball's sole job is to occupy the cornerback that's lined up over him and hold him short, so even though he's getting pressed here and even though he'll be even with that defensive back, he's just going to run to about 7 yards and stop. This is going to hold the cornerback shallow and press man, isolating Hyatt on the nickelback. As for Hyatt, after the snap, he's going to take a pretty hard inside release and read the near safety who, in this case, is the guy that's rolling away from him. With that guy rolling away, he has nobody capping him over the top in the seam, and so he accelerates and catches the ball in that void between the nickelback and the deep middle safety, hitting the boosters after the catch to secure another long touchdown. 
This brings us to the most important touchdown of the game late in the fourth quarter with Alabama up by seven. At this critical moment, Tennessee's just rolling with what's been working for them all game with Hyatt operating out of the slot. On defense, though, this time the nickelback lined up over him is going to play much more of a pure man concept, putting himself in position to cap any route that goes straight down the seam. Tennessee's backfield setup's a little bit different here, with the running back and tight end both offset to the same side, and so Alabama's secondary rotation is going to be a little bit different as well, but the numbers stay the same, with the linebackers playing balance to either side of the center, while the safety closest to Hyatt rolls down to become the seventh run defender. Hyatt's job's going to look totally familiar to us, though, and the thing that I love about this clip is that it gives us a really clear picture of what his eyes are doing. Before the snap, they're pointed inside at the ball, looking to see when the snap happens. Once it does, they then flash straight up to that near safety. At this point, that safety is already starting to roll down, and so Hyatt knows that he's going to be replacing that defender with his route. After the snap, he pushes vertical to attack his man, and right at the break point, he gives a hard jab step to the outside and uses it to cross the nickelback's face on a post route into that space that the near safety's just abandoned. The backside safety tries to come across late to offer inside help, but he's too far to the backside and has to take too flat of an angle, allowing Hooker to deliver a nice ball for the game-tying touchdown, clearing the way for the Volunteers to kick the game-winning field goal with their last drive of the game.